Hello once again my ghouls and my goblins, welcome back. I'm Taylor, your casual crib keeper. You grab yourself a rosary and a little bit of holy water because today we are going to be taking a deep dive on some of the most haunted churches across the world that are anything but holy places. Take my hand as we go forward into the top five haunted churches that are host to demonic entities. You let me know down below which of these churches you'd love to go ghost hunting at and which of these you would spend your Sunday literally anywhere else. Let's get into it. Number five, St. Mary the Virgin Church. Clop Hill, England. I gotta say, that sounds like it's a fake place, like where Sir Topham Hat lives. Well, not only is it real, but it's home to a bone-chilling haunted church, St. Mary the Virgin Church. Now, St. Mary was built in 1350 outside the main settlement of totally real place Clop Hill. Traditionally, churches are built facing the east. I didn't know that. It's so it can align with the sun rising, which in Christianity is associated with heaven and the Messiah. Churches have their altars facing east, so you pray in that holy direction. Well, St. Mary's just had to be a little different, and this church is facing the west, facing away from God. And it's why some people believe the church is hosted to evil spirits, as facing west means they've shunned God and opened their doors to the devil. Paranormal investigators have strongly suspected the church as being host to satanic rituals. As the church fell into disuse, it became a popular spot for vandals, and if you believe the legends, black magic. In 1963, a local couple saw two people wandering around holding a human skull, which definitely I think would cause you to look twice. The people told the couple that they had found the skull in St. Mary's, where it had been jammed into a wall. When the couple went to investigate, they found on the floor a breastbone, pelvis, and leg bones, all laid out in a pattern used for black mass. Pretty spooky. Scattered cockerel feathers and tracings of two crosses filled in red were found inside the church as well. And as if that wasn't slightly unnerving enough, they also found that six graves of women in particular had been tampered with as well. All signs seem to be pointing towards some dark rituals happening at St. Mary's Church. Common sightings at the St. Mary's Church range from smaller scale things like strange screeching during the night or hearing the bell going off despite being long abandoned, and the more threatening reports seeing tall, dark figures wandering the ruins of the church, perhaps getting themselves ready for another ritual, or perhaps they They've been contacted by a ritual and are arriving. Only thing I know is I won't be checking out the Midnight Mass there anytime soon. And if you're interested in way more scary stories of all manners, cryptids, conspiracies, churches, hauntings, aliens, we've got a little bit of everything at Top 5 Scary. So click on through, find something to get cozy with, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell so you catch all of our videos as they drop. But do all that stuff at the end of this one, okay? Because we got way more haunted churches for you coming right up. Number four. Our next entry on the list today is going to be the Aquia Episcopal Church. And if you haven't said that, try saying that 10 times fast. I dare you. Located in picturesque Stafford, Virginia. The church has 200 years of history to it, which means it's also got approximately 200 years worth of ghost stories to study. When the church was first built way back when in the 18th century, it was stained by an unfortunate tragedy. You see, the surrounding areas were exhausted by war and the lack of resources food and money, and as such, brigands would take to the dark country roads to attack innocents during the night for whatever they had on them. Well, one young woman was hiding from a gang of highwaymen and marauders and sought out the church as a safe haven. Unfortunately, the bandits eventually caught up with her and she met an untimely end. Now, these men were never caught for their crime and her body was not found for hundreds of years, left there to rot and decompose. And many believe that because of this, her spirit is tied to the church. And there have been several reports of hauntings ever since the discovery of those accursed bones. Visitors mention hearing footsteps frantically scattered around at night. These footsteps break into a run, but if you go searching, you'll never be able to find anyone attached to them. Voices can be heard in the room where she was attacked, some saying it sounds like a call for help or a painful scream of a struggle. Some go so far as to say they saw a transparent apparition of the woman in the church's windows or on the balcony. One story comes to us from a custodian who worked the graveyard shift there in the 1990s, claiming that he saw a ghostly woman's face floating above the graces and says that he saw her smiling at him through the balcony windows before she vanished. One last one on this church. In the 1990s, to celebrate the bicentennial anniversary, the church sent out an invitation to a group of Civil War reenactors to fight a mock battle on its ground. During the night, one of the reenactors was complaining that there was a red and orange light that was flickering the entire night during the church that prevented him from sleeping. The man explained this to the father of the church, and the father explained back that there was no electricity in the vestry and that the light must have been 
been the spirit confused by why the civil war had started up again. Imagine you're a ghost, you're already out of time, and then you look outside and you see guys from your time. My little ghostly sense of the world would be so thrown off. I would have to buy a new ghost calendar. <laughs> Number three, Minister Nagayal the Duff or Abbey of the Black Hag if you don't got all that time. Wow, you see that? You see what that church is called in that little Chiron below me right now? I'm just supposed to pronounce that with like my lips. Okay, it's also called the Abbey of the Black Hag and that's what we're going with. We're not calling it that other thing. I'm not doing that. Black Abbey of the Hag, only name this church has ever gone by, and it was built in 1298. And it was one of the well-known medieval convents in Old Ireland. The remains of the abbey still stand today in a secluded valley, making an already mysterious and supernatural place just that much more supernatural and overgrown and spooky. I mean, the place is called the Abbey of the Black Hag. You don't name a place that unless it's extremely haunted or if there's like a cool boss fight or something there. It sounds like it's straight out of Dishonored. It's believed that the last abbess, horrible word by the way, in charge of the abbey practiced witchcraft and in the scary way, okay? She brought death, misfortune to the surrounding areas. Pope Martin V condemned the abbey, not being down for witches at all. The accused witch left to live out in the damp, deserted abbey by herself, which she probably loved because it sounds scary. Over time, her skin blackened, her hair furled, and her soul twisted, leading to the place being renamed the Abbey of the Black Hag. And if you can believe it, there's actually more to this one. The Count and Countess of Desmond once called the abbey home when attempting to flee their attackers, where the Countess was fatally struck by an arrow and buried by her husband. But it wouldn't be the end of the Countess because sightings of a ghostly figure around the ruins of the abbey were common, meaning someone eventually went to dig up that grave, finding worn out finger bones, meaning she was still alive when she was buried. It's said now that a woman's panic shrieking can be heard in the early hours around the abbey. Number two, the Borley Rectory. The Borley Rectory is an old London estate that has the unique distinction of being considered the most haunted building in the United Kingdom. No big deal, or anything. <laughs> Almost immediately after its construction, stories of haunting started to creep out. One of the first local legends says that in the 12th century, a priest and a nun had a naughty little affair, and when they were discovered, the nun was bricked up and left to rot in the nearby church. Since then, they say that her spirit roams the rectory. In 1900, four daughters of the then estate owner all said that they saw a nun wandering around the estate late at night. They tried to talk to her, but got no response back, just a scary ghost stare. The family claimed they'd see this nun around the property, and on one occasion, they thought they saw the spectral apparition of a horse-drawn carriage with a headless rider, some real sleepy hollow stuff. From there on, there was all these reports of bizarre sounds or strange shadows creeping out the corner of your eye. In 1927, the estate changed hands as the original family owning the estate had all passed on and a new family, the Smiths, had moved in. Shortly after, they discovered a human skull in the cupboard in a brown bag. Uh, which is not a great housewarming gift, to be honest. They reported poltergeist behavior, unexplained footsteps, lights flicking around them, and the same sightings of headless specters. Now, they only lasted two years, not being down for any of the hauntings or skulls and cupboards, any of that business. And the next family, the Foisters, didn't have much better luck. They had objects flying around their home, and on one occasion claimed their daughter was attacked by something truly horrible. They moved out as well. And the last owner of the rectory would be Captain Gregson, who accidentally lit the estate ablaze while unpacking, although insurance claims they think the fire was started intentionally, perhaps in a desperate attempt to cast away whatever evil has been trapped in the Borley Rectory for so long, or perhaps he unintentionally unleashed it out into the world. Time will tell. At number one, Mortimer Abbey. Mortimer Abbey is a monastery in the forest of Lyons, France, a real old church built in 1134 on marshland near the stagnant water of the drainage lake. The monks dug it out to try and dry the marshy land around the Fulbrock stream, which was called the Dead Pond. In French, Melt Mall, which is where the name comes from. You can kind of hear it there. More Mal, Mortimer, you know. Perhaps it's this history of being built on a dead pond is why Mortimer Abbey was doomed to be haunted. Now the abbey flourished for centuries, but over time started to become claimed by the passage of time, and it fell into decline and disrepair. 
In the 17th century, there was an attempt to try and rebuild the abbey and recapture its former old glory, but the decline was already pretty present and it set in by that point. And by the time of the French Revolution, only five monks still remained in the abbey. Eventually, the abbey would collapse entirely and go private. And in 1863, the abbey would find itself in the hands of a rich Parisian family, the Delarues. Mr. Delarue moved his wife and his sons into the abbey, but soon discovered they weren't the only tenants. While walking the lawns, the young people of the house saw a light from the library. As if by an invisible hand, these hatches unfastened, their handles turned, and the windows and doors all opened. The paintings on the inside of the abbey turned themselves around and steps thundered out into the halls, and nobody moved out immediately after. I would have started looking for new real estate right then and there. But one night, the young Delarue, Charles, had his fiance over to come see the estate that would become her new home in marriage. She was offered the guest room, but found her herself terrified during the night when she couldn't sleep because she was too busy being tormented by mysterious sounds and objects around the room that were hurling themselves around being possessed by something. Having had, quite frankly, enough, like I think any of us might have, the young suitor announced she would never live in this house called off the entire marriage and hurried back to Paris tout suite, where there were plenty of handsome young men asking her hand in marriage who didn't live in old haunted estates, okay? That's the message to take away from this. Get the love you deserve, and the love you deserve is not in a haunted house. That's all she wrote for this one, my ghouls and goblins. Thanks so much for watching. You creep on creeping on now, and I'll see you in the next one.